Hi, I'm Jean Tarboyesh. I'm going to present our work entitled Sample Complexity Bounds for Stochastic Shortest Path with a Generative Model. This is joint work with Matteo, Michal, and Alessandro. Many popular reinforcement learning problems are goal-oriented tasks, where the objective is to minimize the cumulative cost until a specific goal state is reached. This is also coined as the Stochastic Shortest Path Problem. An exploration in SSP has only been sparsely studied, and only recently under the regret minimization lens. Yet we wonder what can we say about the sample complexity of SSP. So let's review our environment at hand, an SSP MDP. The state space is denoted by S, the goal state denoted by G, the action space is denoted by A, and the transition kernel by P. We also consider a non-negative cost function CSA at each detection pair SA. And the specificity of SSP MDPs is that there exists a goal state that is both absorbing and zero cost. Note that the framework is quite general because it encompasses both discounted and finite horizon MDPs. A policy pi is a mapping from states to actions, and we denote by tau pi of s its goal reaching time, starting from state s. We also introduce the value function, also called cost to go, of a policy, denoted by v pi, and it basically amounts to the expected cumulative cost until the goal state is reached. And an optimal policy, if it exists, is one that minimizes the value function. And we denote it by pi star and its corresponding value function, v star. Note that for SSP, we may have a value function of many policies that can be unbounded. And so that's why an important concept is that of a proper policy, which is a policy that reaches the goal with probability one, starting from any state. So now let's detail our learning objective. We consider an SSP with unknown transitions P with access to a generative model, which for any state action pair SA returns a sample drawn from P. And without loss of generality, we also consider a known and deterministic cost function C. We make the standard assumption that there exists at least one proper policy. And we ask the question, how many calls to the generative model are sufficient to compute a near optimal policy with high probability? A first possible direction could be to leverage the inclusion that discounted MDPs or DMDPs are a subset of SSP MDPs. Indeed, there is a rich line of work studying the sample complexity with generative model in discounted MDPs, which matches the minimax rate displayed here. However, while in discounted MDPs, the effective horizon is captured by one divided by one minus gamma, in SSP, the effective horizon is unknown, policy dependent, and even possibly unbounded for some policies. A second possible direction could be to leverage a standard regret to pack conversion. And indeed, for example, in finite horizon, a regret bound can be readily converted to a pack guarantee by selecting as candidate optimal solution any policy chosen at random out of all the episodes. Yet this procedure may not apply to SSP, since the regret is defined as the cumulative cost over the learning phase minus k v star of s0. And so we see here that we are tracking the empirical costs. And so a priori, there is no guarantee on the value function of the deployed policies, which may even be non-proper, so the value function may even be unbounded, which is in contrast to finite horizon regret, which explicitly tracks the value function of the policies deployed at each episode. Let's detail now our sample complexity objective. Our analysis will perform a distinction of cases depending on the value of C min, the minimum possible cost. First, we'll consider that C min is strictly bigger than zero. That is, all the costs are positive. And in that case, the optimal policy pi star is indeed guaranteed to be proper. And we say that an algorithm is epsilon delta optimal with sample complexity n. If after n calls to the generative model, it returns the policy pi, whose value function v pi is epsilon close to v star component-wise with probability at least one minus delta. So now let's delve into some SSP specific challenges in the analysis. So as done standardly, our algorithm will prescribe a minimum number of samples to acquire at each state action pair. And so given an arbitrary number, how do we compute a candidate SSP policy? So here, interestingly, the SSP associated to the empirical model P hat may not even admit a proper policy. So we cannot naively deploy 
let's say, empirical value iteration. So instead, we do a sort of optimistic value iteration. So specifically, we execute extended value iteration for SSP that enables to output a policy pi tilde that is guaranteed to be proper in an optimistic model p tilde. Now, how do we guarantee that such policy is proper in the true model p? To do so, we use a simulation lemma tailored for SSP that can control the deviation of the value function in the two models, as long as the L1 distance between these two models, p and p tilde, is small enough, and specifically is of order c min divided by b star, where b star is an upper bound on the optimal value function v star. However, we see here that b star is a priori unknown, so we need to handle this. And to do so, we rely on a doubling scheme that guesses b star. So since we guarantee that the candidate policy pi tilde is indeed proper in the true model P, its transition matrix capital P restricted to the non-goal states is strictly stochastic. And so we can write the following chain of equalities where basically we expand the series identity minus capital P inverse with a vector denoted by capital W. And here we note importantly that capital W at the goal is equal to zero. So we can artificially introduce the indicator function that the goal state has not been reached at time step t. And this indicator will turn out critical in the analysis. And to, to see this, let's make a high level comparison to the analysis in discounted MDPs. So Azar et al, for different but related quantities, capital W, also handle sums of a, of a sort. And for them, the discount factor gamma, strictly smaller than one, is critical to capture the shrinking effect along the trajectory with exponential decay. Yet in SSP, the discount factor, well, there is none. Gamma is equal to one. So what's the equivalent? Well, we can see that the shrinking effect is somewhat captured by the indicator function that the goal has not yet been reached. And in fact, we can see that its expectation is the probability that the goal has not yet been reached after time t, and it can be shown that it decays exponentially with the time step t. And so we can basically introduce a pseudo discount factor, exponential of minus c min divided by the infinity norm of the value function of a policy in the true model, which can be seen as a sort of, okay, pseudo discount factor, which is critically unknown and policy dependent as opposed to discounted MDPs. So now that we have our series containing both the indicator term and the quantity W, we'll basically split the two terms using Cauchy-Schwarz. And at a high level, we will bound and control the terms depending on the indicator function, thanks to the pseudo discounting property of the policy that I alluded to before. And we will bound the terms depending on capital W by combining variance aware arguments first introduced by Azar et al. in discounted MDPs, as well as the SSP-specific interval decomposition introduced by Rosenberg et al. in the setting of regret minimization for SSP. And ultimately, we can obtain our sample complexity bound. It will depend on B star, which is the maximum optimal value function over states, and also on capital gamma, which is the maximum support of the dynamics, which is at most equal to Ls plus 1. And note that both quantities, B star and gamma, are unknown to the agent. And our result is that for any accuracy epsilon confidence level delta S and cost function C lower bounded by C min, which is strictly positive, our algorithm has a sample complexity bound scaling as B star cubed gamma SA divided by C min epsilon squared. So now let's briefly discuss our bound. So first we see that in the special unit cost case, that is when C min is equal to one, our SSP problem reduces to a discounted problem. So we can directly inherit the lower bound from discounted MDPs and obtain a lower bound for a setting of omega of B star cubed SA divided by epsilon squared. So we can see that our upper bound is tight in the factors of A, epsilon, and B star. However, there is still a gap of the branching factor gamma which is often constant when the dynamics are not too chaotic, but which in the worst case may scale as S. We see in our bound the presence of a ratio B star over C min, 
which captures the effective horizon of a problem in SSP, since it corresponds to an upper bound on the expected goal-reaching time of the optimal policy starting from any state. And in fact, we see that variance aware techniques allow to shave off a term B star over C min in the sample complexity bound, which is consistent with the improvement obtained in the regret scenario as shown by Rosenberg et al. Now, a natural question is whether the C min dependency is unavoidable. So we do not have a definite answer for this open problem, yet our conjecture is that the lower bound should contain a dependency on the characteristic length of an optimal episode, which in the worst case scales as B star over C min. We also study the general cost case of C min equal to zero. So that's a more tricky SSP problem since in fact, the optimal policy pi star may not even be proper. And in that case, we'll instead target the optimal policy pi dagger in an unknown set of policies whose expected goal reaching times are restricted, which guarantees that the targeted policy is indeed proper. We'll then revert to the previous case of strictly positive costs by adding a small cost perturbation as done by prior work. And we control the bias introduced by the cost perturbation thanks to the restricted set. And ultimately, we can derive sample complexity bounds with respect to the policy pi dagger. In conclusion, we derive the first sample complexity bounds with a generative model for the stochastic shortest path problem. Important next steps are to derive a general case lower bound as well as to derive tight upper bounds. Details in our, are in our paper. Thank you very much for listening.